Hello, I'm Elle and welcome back to my Ethical Fashion YouTube channel. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. I upload weekly. Today we're diving into sustainable fashion. You probably have heard this term a lot lately, but what does it really mean? Is everything labeled sustainable truly helping the planet or is there more to the story? So let's explore this together in this video to figure out what the heck is happening in the fashion industry and what sustainable fashion really means. Let's start with the basics what is sustainable fashion? Well, the funny thing and the hard thing is that there is no one set definition for sustainable fashion. It can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. For some, it's all about eco-friendly materials. For others, it's about ensuring that our clothes are made fairly and the people are treated well. Then some people think that sustainable fashion means protecting animals or using packaging that won't end up in the landfill. But here's the tricky part. Because there isn't a clear universal definition, it can be interpreted in many Many different ways with no restriction or liability. Some brands may focus on certain things and call themselves sustainable fashion because of that. But do they really resolve everything that's happening? Probably not because their products can only do so much. And sustainable fashion again is very nuanced that slapping a label on something can just be a temporary solution but it leaves us confused. So yeah let's take a look at sustainable fashion brands. You see not all brands focus on the same issue. Some are using eco-friendly materials in their collections like organic organic cotton, tensile, or recycled materials, but these are often using less water, fewer chemicals, produce fewer emissions compared to traditional fabrics like conventional polyester or cotton. Other brands are focused on the people behind the clothes, so they're just making sure garment workers are being paid a fair wage, work in safe conditions, and have their worker rights respected. It would allow them, honestly, to escape generational cycles of poverty and allow garment workers to have an opportunity to a safe and dignified life. Most garment workers live in sweatshops and they're mostly women and they're known to be harassed by their male managers to pressure them to work harder and faster. So they just end up experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of mental trauma for our cheap fast fashion pieces. So the brands that are making sure that the garment workers are being paid enough are really ensuring that they have a decent life. And honestly, I feel like all fast fashion brands should be doing this. They're making millions, yet they're not paying their garment workers. So I do think they have enough to spare to make this happen on a global scale. And honestly, it just kind of reminds me that as an American, I've been doing the Pledge of Allegiance thing my whole life. They would always say that we need to like take allegiance to liberty and justice for all. And honestly, I have a moral imperative to push for change and an extreme attractive, you know, fashion industry reliant on us Western consumers just taking advantage of the long history that brands have and exploiting garment workers, which are often under countries with lax labor laws that keeps them in cycles of poverty. And so to move on before I go on more tangents, we then have sustainable fashion brands that prioritize animal welfare. These companies are more focused on avoiding using materials like leather or wool, especially if they're coming from sources that harm the animals. So instead they try to advocate for cruelty-free alternatives or innovations in material like mushroom leather and often their effort is really to bring a voice to animals that honestly are usually not at the forefront of the fashion industry. They often think animals should not pay the price for fashion with their life. Although animal waste is natural in some circumstances companies have been known to kill animals for their fur, feathers, you know etc. And these animals may even be tortured on an ongoing basis which honestly subjects the animal to torture and suffering honestly too much to bear for some and lastly some brands could focus on you know the eco-friendly packaging that they use and this eco-friendly packaging could be like compostable mailers or recycled boxes which helps reduce plastic waste which is a massive problem in the fashion industry and this may not come as a huge benefit for us the consumers or the planet when we have you know enough clothing to clothe the next six generations but it can be the start of better practices in the fashion industry. We honestly just need everyone to start doing things more sustainably, even when some solutions just don't feel good enough in the face of the severity of the issues that we're facing as a collective in the industry. So yeah, as you can see, sustainable fashion brands can cover a wide range of issues and it's important to figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it, um, especially when we're shopping. But this does lead me into the question of greenwashing. So I think one of the biggest things that we're challenged with when we're trying to explore sustainable fashion is like figuring out their claims because many times brands say they're eco-friendly or ethical but like where is the data often enough we're relying on estimates or vague reports that may not give us the full picture most brands don't even disclose how much 
clothing they produce a year and there's no way to tell if the reports they came out with are accurate and supply chain audits are a solution they can be done but they are funded by the same organization that's supposed to report on and it's like asking you know yourself what's wrong when you're sick and have no clue because you're not a doctor so for example Shein obviously has major problems to fix in their supply chain but still claim to be the fixer the expert you can say they honestly said they would treat their government workers better and they never did and then they said they were going to cut emissions but they're on their path otherwise like they are literally pretending to be the doctor even though they're the biggest polluter in the fashion industry so yeah this leads us to a huge issue in the world of fashion which is greenwashing this is probably why you clicked on the video in the first place so brands are notorious for making misleading and dishonest claims to seem more environmentally friendly than they actually are and it's frustrating because most consumers us just want to make more you know better choices we want to do things with certainty we don't want to just be left with a sense of unease of like are we contributing to the problem but without clear proof of transparency it's hard to know which brands are actually making a difference and which are just using sustainability as a marketing tool so whenever you see a brand claiming to be sustainable just try to dig a little bit deeper despite how hard it may be check if they're transparent on their website on any reports you can find are they sharing where the materials are coming from, how they're treating their workers, or how they measure their environmental impact. And if you don't find anything, they may be up to no good. And honestly, there is no, you know, official certification or credential that sustainable fashion brands can go and get besides the fair trade certification under World Fair Trade Organization, which it leaves us with very little options on where to turn to for an organization trying to vet things on a very strict global basis for sustainable fashion brands and for brands in general and that means anything can be classified sustainable without any real organized generalized mythology or framework on a global level and so yeah we are left as the consumers trying to do the research you know trying to make sure the brands that we support are walking the talk and it's kind of annoying because it shouldn't be our job to know what they're up to because honestly there's no social norms telling them to make it more obvious how dirty or how unethical they are or how how you know eco-friendly and good they're being unless it's hyper marketed to us which honestly is most of the case but we don't even know if they're saying the truth but we can always try the most popular ways to engage with sustainable fashion which is thrifting because it's no secret that thrifting has become huge with you know gen z and millennials buying second hand you're honestly extending the life cycle of clothing which means less demand for fast fashion it means less demand for resources to be used to produce new items and overall a smaller environmental footprint but here's the thing just because something is thrifted doesn't automatically mean it's sustainable fashion we have to consider whether we're buying clothes because it's just cheap and trendy versus actually liking that item we can still over consume despite secondhand shopping habits and i hate to say it but sometimes i fill up my cart full of things and just end up with a closet full of unworn things which is honestly wasteful for my bank account and for the intentional life that i want to live so when you're thrifting try to think about whether you actually need it are you just buying something just because or will you wear it multiple times or is it just gonna like sit in your closet on the floor because yeah mindful consumption is all about really reflecting on the choices that you're making via clothing and it should apply to our thrifting habits as much as it does to fast fashion and it's super important because we collectively shape the future of sustainable fashion and a key aspect of being more mindful in our consumption is knowing our morals and values sustainability isn't just something that's external that's outside of us it's not just the planet you know it's not just our actions that we can see from a bird's eye view it's more like how we think as a person internally wise our thoughts our emotions so i encourage you to ask yourself why do you care about sustainable fashion is it to make sure the workers who made your clothes are treated fairly is it to reduce your carbon footprint is it animal welfare ask yourself these questions when you're shopping ask yourself really truly what do i care about what aligns with my values. The answers will hopefully guide you to make more conscious decisions because remember sustainability is not a one-size-fits-all. 
like what works for some won't work for you obviously so yeah and finally i think the most important takeaway from today's video is know your why when buying fast fashion and sustainable fashion because whether it's a good brand or quote unquote a bad brand it's essential to understand the reason behind your purchase is it something that you need while you wear it often or is it just an impulse buy like the more intentional we become with our purchases the more sustainable hopefully our fashion choices become and i just want to say that fast fashion often gets a bad rep and for good reason but knowing if you're really in need of something or if you're just buying it for the sake of buying is always going to be the way to go but the point of the video again is sustainable fashion really sustainable well the answer is it depends it's nuanced and complex and requires us to dig deeper in how we see sustainability yet we can't forget that we need to hold brands accountable avoid greenwashing and above all understand our own values and why we're making the choices that we are. I'm curious to know what you think about of the things that I've shared in this video and if I've missed anything. I'm sure there is so much more conversations we can have um, outside of the short YouTube video that I've made. So yeah, I'm happy to keep covering this topic and exploring it and hearing your thoughts to get into the nitty gritty. So yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, feel free to subscribe and turn on your post notifications. So yeah, thank you so much. Peace and love. Oh.